So we finished our first unit in accounting. That really, up until Rico Sanchez, was our first unit. How's that for a long unit? Pretty much a semester. What we learned in our first unit was how to journalize, record, post, and create financial statements for a service business organized as a sole proprietorship. Okay? Those all terms should make sense to you. September, if I would have said that to you, you're like, I don't know anything that she's talking about. But those are all going to be terms that you know now. So now, with us starting on Chapter 9, this is our second unit. Our second unit covers recording transactions for a merchandising business organized as a corporation. Okay? Key things that we find here that are different. Merchandising business, which means instead of performing a service, we're selling a good. Okay, and when you sell a good, you're going to go through and – it'll take me just a minute. Um, if I'm going to sell this Yeti cup, did I say am I making this cup? No. So I have to figure out how much does this cup, cup cost me, and then I have to turn around and sell it. Agreed? Because I'm not manufacturing it. I'm just turning around and selling the products. So the difference between what I pay for it and what I sell it for is called your markup. And certain businesses have higher markups than other. All businesses need to have markups, otherwise they don't make money. And it costs money to operate the business, to pay employees, to turn the lights on, to shovel the snow, to put the salt out, to pay for the water in the bathroom, the toilet paper in the, in the stalls, all of that. So we have to go through and do our when we determine our profit, a little bit different because it's a merchandising business. Also, we're not a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship means that one owner gets all the money. Now, as a corporation, we have to go through and take a look at what happens with that money. And the money that is distributed would go to its stockholders. But sometimes a business will hold on to that money in something called retained earnings, and the retained earnings is what they use to hold on to it because they're going to expand down the road. And they want to go through and purchase some new equipment. Instead of going through and giving all the money to the stockholders, they'll say, we're going to save this money because we're going to buy a new um, display unit or we're going to buy a new computer equipment. So we'll have to go through and do things just slightly different from that point. Now, when we go through and journalize, we're still going to journalize just like we did before. We're going to post, we have ledgers, we have journals, except our journals now are changing. This is one of the journals that we're going to be working with. Now, when we look at our journal, it looks similar to other journals that we've used, right? On the left-hand side, we have our date column, two columns for the date, one for the month and one for the day, and then we have a spot where we would write in account title. But notice, what does it actually say here instead of account title? account credited. Then this column right here, instead of saying source document, it says purchase number. This column looks the same, right? We have a, a post-reference column. But then look, we only have one spot for numbers. This right here is our purchases, invoice, our purchases journal. The only time that we use a purchases journal is when we're going to turn around and buy something um, that we're going to sell. Okay. So when I go around and I'm going to sell phones now, okay, so I have this phone, I buy it, I pay cash for it. So I know cash is going down, right? What's going up? The account called purchases. So that is the account that we are going to use. Purchases is called a cost account. So we're adding a new classification. We have assets liabilities, instead of owner's equity, I'm going to call it stock owner's equity, same thing. Then we have our cost accounts, we have our revenue accounts, and then we have our expenses. Now, what do our costs do to our net income? Up or down? Down. What is the downside of our capital account? Debit. So our cost accounts will have a debit balance. Okay? Just because that's what we use. We keep track of our cost accounts to keep track of how much money it costs us to turn around and sell it. When I go through and determine whether or not I made a profit on selling that phone, 
I have to take a look at what my expenses are, subtract that from what I paid for it, but I also have to factor into now what the cost was. Okay? So we have to have that cost account in order for us to determine whether or not we've made a profit or not. So now you will notice that we only have one column here for numbers. So that should mean your debits and credits should always equal, right? Because notice this column here says purchases DR. They abbreviate debit DR and instead of DB, just so you know. Accounts payable is credited. So if I write $300 here, that means I'm debiting purchases and I'm crediting accounts payable. But again, this is only used when I buy merchandise that I'm going to turn around and sell on an account. If I buy paper, which is supplies office, it doesn't go in here. Again, only products that I'm going to turn around and sell. Now right here, instead of it saying item column, we have something called accounts credited. What we're going to have now is we have these new accounts, and this new account is called a controlling account. So I, under my assets, I'm going to have an account called accounts receivable. That's it. It has no other words with it. It just says accounts receivable. Under my liabilities, I have a new account that's called accounts payable, and that's it. I have a new ledger. I have two new ledgers. It's called my subsidiary ledger, and it has all of my accounts receivable and all my accounts payable in it. So if you were all my customers in my subsidiary ledger, I would have a different ledger sheet for each one of you. And you would be accounts receivable, but instead of writing out accounts receivable and then your name, I could just write out your name because you would be customers. And if you guys were my vendors or my accounts payable, I would have your vendor names in there, and instead of writing out accounts payable in your name, I would just write out your name, and I would know that it's accounts receivable or accounts payable. So what that gives us in my assets or my liabilities, it gives me the total amount of what I owe. As your business gets bigger and you have more liabilities, more things that you owe, it's, you want to be able to quickly glance to see how much do I owe my vendors. And that controlling account, accounts payable, will give you that as a snapshot. Otherwise, you'd have to go to each one and then add it up. So it's really important as businesses grow for them to have that information. The same thing for accounts receivable. At any point, I should be able to talk to somebody and say, yeah, my customers owe me $750.16. I get that information from that controlling account. So because we don't have to write the words accounts receivable or accounts payable, you will see right here it just says accounts credited because instead of writing Don's quality market, or excuse me, accounts payable Don's quality market, I would just write Don's quality market, and Don's quality market would be the account that would be credited. Now, we are going to have a couple new columns in some new journals. So we're going to have specialized journals. And this is our first one, and this is the easiest one. This journal is always used when your source document is a purchase invoice. Purchase invoices are always used when you are buying merchandise on an account. Can you, anyone want to guess what, what the abbreviation for a purchase invoice would be? P, exactly. So when you look at a transaction, and the transaction has a P on there for the source document, that's going to tell you it has to go in the purchases journal. So we have another step when we go to journalize is we are going to have to determine what journal we use and then how to journalize it. And we're going to have five journals to work with. Purchases, sales, general, cash receipts, and cash payments. But your source document will always clue you in on which one is going to happen first. So let's go through and journalize this. Are we ready? So our directions read, The purchases journal for Lambert Hardware is given below. Your instructor will guide you through the following example. Using the current year, journalize the transaction on page 10 of the purchases journal. Purchases invoices are abbreviated as P. As P. Now, you will see that the 10 is already filled in here. It said that the month is October, so I'm going to fill in October. And then the first transaction is recorded on the second. It says, purchase merchandise on account from American Tools, $1,230, P16. So I put the date of the second, and then I'm going to put in American Tools. Purchase invoice, I'm just putting in 116. Why do I only put in 116 instead of P? 
on the very top of the column, it already says purchase invoice. So all I have to do is go ahead and just put in 116 because I'm only putting purchases journals in there. So then I put 1,230 in my amount column. October 7th, I purchased merchandise and account from Harris Manufacturing, purchase invoice 117, and the amount of 480. What you will find is when I'm filling out my purchases journal is I should never have a gap in numbers, meaning I should always go sequential order. If something happens where I'm missing a number, that should clue us in that, oh, oops, something happened. We missed, a, we missed journalizing something. My last transaction is the date of the 11th. And that's purchase merchandise on account from Kiesler Supply. Purchase invoice 118 for $780. Now, during the month of October, those are all of the items that I purchased on account. And that's okay. So when I take a look at the Thunder Zone, we probably only buy merchandise on account three or four times a month. We don't have it happening all the time because we don't receive that much new merchandise all the time. So at the end of the month, you have to total improve every journal. So how many days are in October? 31. Okay. Now, under account credited, you're going to write total. Why are you writing total instead of totals? There's only one column. Now, here's the thing. I want you to add it up twice. Why? Just to double check. Because once you because there's only one column for numbers, all you have to do is go ahead and add it up twice and as long as you get the same number twice, you should be good to go. I got 2190. Anyone concur? 400? Oh. I got it twice at that one. What did I put in wrong? Well, I'll do it again. See, that's why we added up twice. I got 490. You guys are right. I made a mistake. Whoop. So what do you think? Does the purchases journal look very hard? No, not too bad. No, purchases journal always stays this easy. Other journals get harder. <laughs>